welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. For years, public libraries have offered varying degrees of tax services, depending on the program and the ability for libraries to provide the service. For some libraries, it's simply a matter of providing up-to-date tax forms for free. For other libraries, they deliver services through volunteer groups to provide patrons with tax assistance or even preparation of the tax forms themselves. For many, libraries have become an indispensable place for filers during tax season. In today's program, we're going to talk about the kinds of services libraries can provide and some of the new programs in place to make that job a lot easier. With me now is Castle Pulliam of the Internal Revenue Service, a Senior Stakeholder Relationship Tax Consultant. Thanks for being with us. My that, pleasure. Uh, Castle, that's a big title. What does it mean? I have the pleasure, Stan, of uh, working with the volunteers all over the state of West Virginia that uh, prepare and electronically file uh, federal and state tax returns for low to moderate income folks and, and the elderly, uh, the disabled, veterans, and and others who uh, are, are not served as well as they might be with the, the paid professional community. And you're talking about the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Exactly. VIDA. VIDA will be 50 years old next year, mm -hmm. passed by Congress in 1969. And uh, in, in West Virginia, we have about 100 different locations where folks can go and have their returns prepared and filed for free. And about 25 of those 100 are libraries. We'd love to see more libraries involved. So tell me about the program. How does it work? Well, VITA, as I say, is a, is a volunteer-based program. It's a partnership between the IRS and local organizations, such as community action agencies, senior centers, libraries. Uh, we provide training and software and support. The local organization provides the volunteers and the physical plan. And it's a perfect match with local libraries. We've been very successful. In recent years, uh, a new program that kind of has started that stems from VITA, uh, My Free Taxes. Absolutely. What is that about? We have found that it's becoming more and more difficult, just, just like a lot of other organizations have found, it's becoming more and more difficult to recruit new volunteers. You know, folks are having kids later in life. Uh, folks are still going to soccer games. They have other priorities, and it's just more and more difficult. So we are now partnering with the United Way in a program called My Free Taxes. They uh, offer H&R Block premium software for free for anyone making under $66,000 a year. They can prepare and file their own federal and state returns for free using this name brand software. And we're trying to identify some new locations uh, to offer that uh, program. And I think libraries would be very well suited. So if a library is interested in taking part in the program, what are the steps they have to take? They simply go online and, and uh, fill out a form with a username and password and, and become a, a partner. Uh, and then there will be available for them marketing materials, uh, posters and flyers and paycheck stuffers and so on and so forth, uh, news releases all different ways that they can uh, advertise their service to the public. And then some libraries will uh, simply you know, offer the program, let the public know about the program, uh, and the folks will prepare the returns themselves, either at the library at home. Uh, some might have volunteers there on hand to help folks do it. Volunteers really seem to be, for a lot of these folks, the, the key element in making this program work. Volunteers are absolutely the most important link in the chain. Because when you think about you know, tax return preparation, essentially what you're doing is taking the numbers from this piece of paper and putting them in the proper place on this, uh, this piece of software. And somebody has to do that. Uh, it can be a volunteer or it can be the taxpayer. And the beauty of the My Free Taxes program is you don't necessarily have to have a volunteer present. We do have 800 uh, service that will provide support by certified volunteers at call centers all over the country during the filing season. Where do you get the volunteers? 
Well, we find that there are two types of people in the world that, that like to, to work at Vita sites. There, there are people that want to serve, and there are people that like to put square pegs in square holes. <laughs> and, and sometimes they're a little bit of both. So, so we look for folks that maybe have some experience with numbers, maybe not. Uh, folks that uh, enjoy working with other people. You know, oftentimes they're retired school teachers, retired engineers. Uh, college students. We have 10 college programs and we have over 100 students involved. Uh, these are business students or accounting students and uh, I, I got to tell you employers love to see VITA on a resume. Mm -hmm. So we find folks all over the place. You don't necessarily have to be an accountant or have any prior bookkeeping experience. Where do you know, the taxpayers interested in, in these programs, how do they find out about them? How do they find out where they can go to get these programs uh, there, to work there, for them. There are two very simple ways to go on the internet and find out. If they go to the IRS website, which is simply irs.gov, irs.gov, they can put in the search engine, Vita Site Locator. And then they'll put in their zip code, and it will give them a list of the sites nearest, give them the hours that the sites are available. Or they can go in West Virginia to www dot wveitc dot com and uh, you'll find our state coalition's website and they'll provide all the same information. From your perspective, how important do you feel VIDA and, and My Free Taxes and these kinds of programs are? Well, you have to think about the folks that we serve. And when we say low to moderate income, uh, and when we say our, you know, our our maximum limit of income is, is maybe $55,000. Uh, a lot of folks that we serve in West Virginia make a whole lot less than that. And, and for them, that $250 or $300 or more that they would turn over to have someone else prepare their return is, uh, is groceries for a month or, or child care for a week. So what we do makes a difference. It's important to the folks we serve. And it's a pleasure to do it. And libraries, you feel, can play an important role in all that. They absolutely can. You know, libraries historically have been more than just places to, to check out books. They're, they're community centers. Uh, they're, they're a vital part, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> they're, they're a vital part of, of the community activities. And uh, they have a tremendous role to play in VITA, whether it's sponsoring a site with trained volunteers available to prepare returns, or whether it's just offering computers and perhaps some assistance for folks that want to prepare their own. As you work to try to expand the program across the state of West Virginia, what is, what's the biggest challenge that you face? I'd say the biggest challenge right now is, is what I said earlier. It's identifying new volunteers uh, and also identifying additional locations, uh, sponsors, what we call sites, where we can offer the services. Uh, we have absolutely no problem finding taxpayers to serve. The need in West Virginia is huge. We just need more folks that are willing to serve. Castle, thanks for your time. My pleasure. We'll have more on library tax programs after this. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Two libraries in West Virginia that have traditionally taken a very active role in providing tax services for their patrons are the Ohio County Public Library in Wheeling and the Mary H. Weir Public Library in Weirton. With me now to talk about those programs, Ohio County Library Director Dottie Thomas and Mary H. Weir Library Director Rick Rakowski. Guys, thanks for being with us. Oh, you're Thank you're welcome. you. Uh, so, Dottie, let's start with you. Describe your program. It, it's, it's a big one. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, uh, Ohio County Public Library is a very large library mm -hmm. physically, it's over 54,000 square feet. And that has helped us tremendously in offering space for programs like this. So we have a room 
uh, that we can offer to the VITA tax volunteers to use throughout tax season. And they literally set that up uh, in the way they want uh, with their furniture and our room dividers and all of that so that they can have their preparers each have a separate cubicle. And uh, the whole room is set up with a waiting room area for the patrons that are having their taxes done and uh, a, a reception table in the opening of the, when you first come in the room, they come in set up, they do their training there prior to tax season starting, and then they perform the service. Is it all volunteers? It's VITA volunteers through change. And they are in charge of recruiting their volunteers, their preparers, and the other you know, reception people who do the intake information. So the whole thing runs without the library's personnel really having to be involved. We provide the space. It's great. Not, not all libraries have that kind of space available. Exactly. Yes. We are very fortunate to have that. And of course, then that means also they can be open all the hours we're open. So they are open uh, five days a week and on Saturdays by appointment only. So really six days a week, they have someone there preparing taxes and normal number of preparers there at any one time throughout the day are about four or five. So it makes for a very active, busy tax season for us and they are there throughout tax season, of course. And your program is actually one of the biggest in the country. Right. We have been in the top three or four consistently for the past, I'm not even sure how many years, 10 to 15. Mm. Yeah, I think last year you guys processed over 5,000 tax right. forms out of that library. Yes, and they do the e-filing, of course, which also you know helps. So, On the other end of the spectrum, uh, Mary H. Weir Library in Weirton. Rick, you have a program there. It's considerably smaller. Why don't you talk about your program? Well, it, it is the same program, uh, collaborated, collaborated with Change Incorporated. And Change Incorporated provides uh, services throughout Hancock, Brook, Ohio County, and Marshall County. And Change uh, coordinates the, the uh, to bring the VITA program in to, to provide the certification uh, uh, for the tax preparer. Uh, it is a professional uh, accountant. Uh, so when, when the public comes in, they are dealing with a professional with standards. And uh, ours is generally, well, our population in Weirton is about 19,000 people. Uh, we have about, mm, 12 to 14,000 library card holders, but one, uh, about 20% of our population is over the age of 65. And uh, we generally have the tax service available on Saturdays. Uh, we've had it up to maybe 11 Saturdays uh, uh, throughout the tax season where the preparer would come in to the library. Uh, we have people lining up at the doors when the doors are uh, uh, unlocked for them to come in. And we have uh, access to the activity room where they will meet. And uh, the, it's always private. Uh, it's not a, everybody in one room uh, receiving service. The, 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 prayer, the preparer is working one-to-one -one with, uh, with a person who needs assistance. And uh, uh, we do have... Uh, 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 the, the library building for our public and the community, uh, uh, just like the Ohio County and all our libraries, I'm, I'm sure, uh, has the income tax forms for the state as well as the federal. And uh, but it, ours are basically on the weekends, and and uh, 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 10 o'clock in the morning to maybe 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, uh, there's no appointments. It's a walk-in, and uh, uh, when people need to, to perhaps maybe make an appointment, we have the connection that we refer them over to a representative of Change uh, Incorporated. And uh, but without Change, we 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 couldn't we couldn't have this service in the library. How important do you two feel this kind of service is for your for your community? 
Oh, I think it's very important, and our board has consistently supported continuing to have it because, of course, with the level um, of service that we offer for that and the numbers that come in, they are literally, as Rick said, lined up at the door, and and in this large building, the line will stretch all the way up the stairs and around the hall, and yes. um, we're talking a lot of people. So it kind of impacts the rest of the library programs and service we can offer, but the board feels that it's a vital service to offer to the pay our community, and um, it certainly has made a difference you know, for the people, and we get a lot of positive feedback on the fact that we are able to offer that service. How difficult is it for you to differentiate to the public uh, that your staff aren't the guys doing this, and that these, the folks, the volunteers in there aren't really your staff. I would think that might create some confusion for you. Well, again, though, our large building helps because the room that they're in is on the lower level in a particular area. And, and so it's easy to say, well, you know, they're in this area. So we don't have too much trouble with that. Is it tougher for you, Rick? I, I, I can tell you that when I moved through the community, I, I can remember being at uh, Weirton Medical Center, uh, being uh, uh, moving down on a gurney, that the nurse will ask me, are you doing income tax help this year? I mean, out of nowhere, uh, it, it's known in the community. Okay. And, and uh, I address it to Weirton City Council, to every public meeting during the tax period, uh, to make sure that uh, change is also recognized because they are our collaborators to, to provide this service. And uh, when you're asking, what does this mean to the community? Uh, there are, of course, it's the entire tax questions and issues that an individual will have to the preparer that needing assistance. But there are uh, child uh, income credit uh, filings uh, that is one area, and, and then the, the other one is the uh, 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 earned income credit. And you may think, well, what, what does that have to do? Well, if those, those forms are not filed, and if they're not filed correctly, that, that money is not coming back to our West Virginian communities. That money is coming back. It's not just for that individual but it's going to be for West Virginia. Mm -hmm. and, and so the role of our libraries is just to provide that space with that expertise for that uh, 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 supporting group, which is Change Incorporated, to, to, to bring that service to us. We just provide a facility, the documents, and, and, and our libraries provide the uh, broadband uh, as well. Rick, Donnie, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank we'll be you. back with more on libraries today, right after this. Welcome to understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and expert advice. As we approach tax season, more libraries are stepping up to help provide services to their patrons. We're here now in Grafton, West Virginia, to get a glimpse at how the Taylor County Public Library plans to work with the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, also known as VIDA. With me now is VIDA Area Coordinator, Cherie Sarceno, and the Director of the Taylor County Public Library, Alicia Toko Whitehair. Ladies, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first let's uh, talk with Cherie and tell me about VIDA. Well, VITA's been around for over 40 years, so it's been around for a while. And not only is it in West Virginia, but all of the, the country. So when I first started this program, I wanted to know more about it. So I got on YouTube and was looking at some videos. And they were from anywhere from California to Florida to everywhere. Um, I even saw one down in Panama, which was a military site. Um, and it, anyone can volunteer um, from a college student to a senior citizen. Um, all the information that we get for the program is provided by the IRS. We are trained by the IRS and certified. Um, there are documents that we complete um, to be a certified IRS uh, VITA volunteer. 
Um, once that's done, then we go to our sites um, once tax season starts. Normally that's middle of January, end of January um, last year. Um, and we uh, get people to do taxes. Now, there are certain guidelines for this program because it is made for low to moderate income individuals and families. Um, the income has to be 54000 or less. That's the only um, thing that you have to meet is the income guidelines. Now, we only do basic taxes. So if somebody has a large corporation or owns a apartment complex, we don't uh, handle those. It's just basic taxes. Um, anything further than that, we then refer them to a paid preparer. How can, uh, how can libraries take part in this program? Well, to me, libraries are information hubs. And for that, I feel that um, if you work in the United States, you have taxes taken out, so you have to do your taxes. So therefore, libraries are a perfect place to find information about getting your taxes done because if someone doesn't do them for you, you do them yourself and the, it's a great place to find it at the library, um, the information you need you know, to do your taxes. Alicia, how uh, is the Taylor County Public Library planning to participate this year? Um, we're going to do it how we did it last year. Um, we do it on Saturdays and um, the VITA comes in and we have a table set up so people can come in and sign in. And for us, um, we do uh, try and schedule people out. That way we know how many people we're trying to fit in. Um, and then this year we're also going to be doing um, them on the computers so VITA can come down and the people can come assist the people. What kind downstairs. of response did you get? Um, we had a very good response. Uh, people are always very appreciative to have that resource available to them. Um, so we filled up every single day that VITA was in. Um, we had people in from start to finish. It seems to me a program like this would really help bring the community and the library closer together. Um, definitely. We see a lot of people that normally don't come in. They'll come in to do the taxes and then they'll see the library and be like, oh, this is a really nice place to be. And so we do get more people coming in throughout the year um, after coming into our tax programs. Cherie, uh, what kind of impact does a program like this have on the families that you work with? Well, the VITA program is a free service. So if you get your taxes done by VITA or the service that she was talking about down on the computers, which is the My Free Tax program that will be assisting people doing their own taxes, both of them are free. And not only is it federal, but it's state also. There's no limit on the state or on either one of them. So if you work in two or three different states, you can still get your taxes done um, for free. So to me, if you have to go to a paid preparer, which some people do, right now that's anywhere between $200 to $400. And the people that we are um, helping are low to moderate income, which to me that could help somebody for their monthly groceries, their electric bill. I'd rather help them so they can save that money. What are the kind of challenges you face with a program like this? Unfortunately, some of the challenges is once people know about the program, as Alicia was saying, that we filled up. And unfortunately, we have to turn away some people because we don't have maybe enough volunteers or for the fact that they may not meet our guidelines. And I personally hate turning anyone away. If I can help everyone, I would. <laughs> Where do you see the program headed? What's the, what's the future for VITA? I would really like to see more libraries involved in it um, because, like I said, I believe they're, they're a great information hub that it would be a good place to find information about not only VITA but My Free Taxes, um, the IRS pages that we have um, that give general information that they can just come in and you know find that information where some people feel that the IRS may be hiding stuff they're never hiding it. It's there. You just have to look for it. And a library is a great place to find it. I would think a program like this would be even more important as the complexity of taxes increases. And we've seen that in the past several years. Correct. And 
Another part that I do um, as a VITA coordinator is financial literacy. So anything that ever changes or is made aware, we make it aware to the public by getting out flyers and stuff like that. And I bring a lot of that stuff here, uh, financial literacy throughout the year, to Alicia and the librarians here and to a lot of the libraries in my counties. Alicia, what is your goal for this program? Um, my goal is to keep the program going, to keep participating with VITA. They're a great program. They're a great resource. If we do have people come in, um, they're always there. We can call them, and they're always willing to help us answer questions. Um, and so, yeah, I'd just like to continue on with this partnership and make it grow and um, maybe eventually have more days, but one step at a time. <laughs> Cherie, Alicia, appreciate it. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have more on libraries today right after this. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. Create a curious reader. This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. Public libraries are increasingly becoming a vital part of their local community, not only by providing information and internet access, but by delivering important programs like tax assistance. Many public library patrons don't have the funds needed to utilize most tax preparation services, and these low-income residents often depend on programs like VITA and My Free Taxes that are provided by libraries all across the state to get their taxes done. During tax season, West Virginia public libraries can deliver essential services to many low-income families in their communities. I'd like to thank my guests for being on today's show. IRS consultant Castle Pulliam, North Central West Virginia VITA coordinator Cherie Sarseno, and library directors Dottie Thomas of Ohio County, Rick Rakowski of Mary H. Weir, and Alicia Toko Whitehair of Taylor County. I'm Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today. <laughs>